We all know Goku is the strongest character in all of Dragon Ball. Wrong! Brawly is! So, what would happen if Vegeta and Goku fall Brawly at the same time? Let's find out. This video was made by the one and only Fabiano Cruz. Make sure to check him out. Link is in the description. No Cruz. But here we go. We have Goku and Vegeta with sitting across Frieza. Oh boy, and here comes Brawly. Wait, Frieza has all the Dragon Balls. What is he going to wish for? Fun fact, I actually thought Frieza was a, a woman or like a grandma for the first like five years that I watched Dragon Ball. Apparently, he actually is a dude. I, I didn't know that. But ladies and gentlemen, it is about to go down. Yo, Brawly is not happy instantly. And Vegeta isn't even trying right now. He has his arms tucked into his jacket. Oh, there we go. He took it off. And he's going in now. Let's go, Vegeta. Yo. Oh, he just double spinning back kicked him. I made up that term, but that's definitely what it's called. Oh, my Lord. Have mercy. Oh, he's powering up a little bit. But still, no one has gone Super Saiyan yet. So they're kind of still just testing the waters. But we all know that all of the characters in this video so far can get crazy, crazy strong. But so far, honestly, Vegeta's holding his own way better than I thought that he would against Brawly. Let's go, Vegeta. Vegeta's one of the most underrated characters in all of Dragon Ball. He is so cool. I wish that he ended up being stronger, even though I guess he is really strong. But I wish that he won more battles than he did. But he seems to be giving Brawly a really good run for his money. And there we go. There is the first Super Saiyan we're seeing. Vegeta is whipping it out. Pause. And he's so kind of getting... He's getting walloped by Brawly. He's still in his normal form. No. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Is he going to go Super Saiyan 2? Oh. Super Saiyan God. Is that, is that not what that's called? Super Saiyan Rosé. Uh-oh, uh-oh, final blast! No way that's it, right? Nope, that's not it. Uh-oh, Brawly's powering up! Oh, and Goku comes in! They're a little tag team. Now, I, there's a couple things I'm not sure we're going to see in this battle. Like, are Vegeta and Goku going to battle together at the exact same time? Because that is kind of something that they've agreed to never do. They don't like battling together, but sort of like doing swipsy swapsies like they just did. Because they suck. Because they sort of have an honor code system. They don't feel like it's fair to battle one guy at the same time. And they have too much integrity to do that as well. But they have fused together before and battled that way, I guess, technically together. So maybe they'll do that in this video to take on Brawly. I hope that they do, because... Guys, their fusion is so sick. Come on, Goku. Let's go, Goku. Bro, he just said, yummy, yummy, ah! And it's doing absolutely nothing against Bali. That was terrible. Oh, God. Goku, you might want to power up. You might want to go Super Saiyan, like, right now. Right now. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Okay. A little bit late, but it seemed to work out. Oh. He just pimp slapped that <laughs> blast away, bro. That is embarrassing. He just said, shoot. Oh, boy. Come on, Goku. Yeah. If you guys couldn't tell, by the way, I'm Team Goku and Team Vegeta. They are like my favorite characters in any anime. Come on, bro. We know Goku has like a million different forms. And there is one of them. I thought that this was Kyle Ken for a second, but no, it's Super Saiyan God. I don't know why they're not... Like, normally, Goku and Vegeta go up stage by stage. Like, they'll go Super Saiyan 1, then Super Saiyan 2, sometimes Super Saiyan 3. But then it normally goes, like, Super Saiyan 3, and then Super Saiyan Blue, and then Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken. Kaioken times 4, Kaioken times 20. But they're going straight to Super Saiyan God here after Super Saiyan 1. So, I, I don't know. Is, is Super Saiyan Blue more powerful than, than, the, than the pink one? I, I think it is, but I don't, I don't really know. We're going to find out, though. Wait, he like froze him. He just froze Brawly for a couple seconds. And now we're just getting walloped. Why is it like once they power up, they start to get wrecked? Oh boy. Yo! Wait, Brawly is actually insanely strong. Oh boy. Uh oh, he just took his shirt off. This is my favorite board, bro. And now he's going Super Saiyan Blue. So we're about to see Goku's almost full power. Fun fact about me as well I've watched like all of Dragon Ball Z and all of Dragon Ball Super, but I still haven't seen the Brawly movie. So if there's some like things that happen in the Brawly movie that are similar to this, I apologize for not making the reference and connection. Here we go now. Let's go. Super Saiyan Blue Goku. There we go. Now we're talking. 
We are no longer talking. We are absolutely no longer talking. Oh, is that lava? They're fighting in lava? What? Bro, that is low-key sick. Is that a spear bomb? Is that a... No, that's not a spear bomb. That's a brawly bomb. And you know it's serious because Frieza just took cover. Bro, and... Oh, boy. Honestly, I... I don't know who that is. Is that like Brawly's dad or something? Well, I... Oh, dude! Are you serious? Freeze? If that is Brawly's dad, Frieza literally just killed Bra Brawly's dad to make Brawly super angry because now he's going to power up like crazy. It almost seems like Frieza hired Brawly to defeat Goku and Vegeta because he couldn't do it himself. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. That is really not good. He was already strong enough to go head to head with Goku in the Super Saiyan Blue form. And now he's powered up tremendously and Frieza is overjoyed about it. I feel like Brawly should go attack Frieza now though because Frieza just killed his dad. Oh boy. That's not good. Super Saiyan Brawly is very scary. I think Goku and Vegeta are going to have to fuse if they stand any chance against him. Let's be honest here. Oh boy. Oh no, he's too fast. He is too fast. Goku might have to go Ultra Instinct. Vegeta now is in Super Saiyan Blue as well. He tried to get some good hits off and it did absolutely nothing. Oh God. Oh God. Come on, Fusion Ha, Fusion Ha. Oh no, they're just gonna do a Kamehameha and a final blast together. Yo, surely that's gonna be strong enough. Bro, not only was that not strong enough to defeat Brawly, it literally did nothing. It literally did nothing. What can they possibly do? This is almost their last four. I mean, I know Goku can go Kaioken as well and Ultra Instinct, but I don't, I, at this rate, I don't know how much more of a difference that's even going to make. I think that they might have to fuse. They might have to fuse and go Ultra Instinct. If that's even possible, I don't know if they can. Come on, boys. You got this. They do seem to be pretty synchronized. Oh. Oh, wait, did Brawly just destroy Frieza? I knew it, bro. I was saying he should definitely fight Frieza because Frieza literally just killed his dad. Frieza's so dumb for that. Why would you do that? And now Goku and Vegeta are, are escaping. And they just teleported back to Earth. That's pretty smart, actually. I would probably do that, too. Live to fight another day, boys. Oh! Oh, my God! He's saying that they should fuse! And the thing is, Vegeta never likes to fuse because he has too much pride. Too much Saiyan pride. Wait, Goku and Piccolo are fusing? What the heck? Uh-oh, Vegeta's getting jealous. I never thought I'd see the day that Vegeta gets jealous, but I don't think that he liked that Goku was willing to fuse with Piccolo. So <laughs> I have a feeling that Vegeta is going to say, Psych, wait a second. Hold on, hold the phone. I want to fuse with you. And they're going to make Gogito. And they're going to go crazy. Uh-oh, but now we have Frieza. Is that golden form? Golden Frieza going up against Super Saiyan Brawly. But here we go. We are getting Gogito. Bro, he is thick. Now, honestly, I can't remember the last time I've seen them fuse. They fuse at the end of Dragon Ball Z against Majin Buu, but I don't think that they did in all of Dragon Ball Super. So I'm not sure how strong they actually... Oh, okay. <laughs> they messed it up. That's why he was so thick. And now he's way too skinny. They are messing up the Fusion Ha so much. And Piccolo is embarrassed. Honestly, it's uh, it's actually good that they're messing up because this is giving Brawly enough time to defeat Frieza. And then they can go back after Frieza has been KO'd and defeat Brawly themselves. Oh, it's Whis! Wait, what? What is Whis doing there? Is Beerus also there? Surely Beerus could take on Brawly, right? Here we go. Third time's the charm! Yo! Okay, there we go! Go, Gino! <laughs> Dude, that first one, I was like, bro, why is he so thick? Okay, don't mess with Whis, bro. You know not to mess with Whis. But here we go. This is literally the ultimate battle. I think that this is a battle that all fans, at least myself, have always wanted to see. Is Brawly versus Fused Goku and Vegeta, Gogito. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be insane. Let's do this. My money's on Gogito. Come on. You guys got to bring it home. You got to bring it home. Come on. You can feel the tension, bro. You can literally feel the tension. So this move earlier destroyed Goku and Vegeta. 
and it does absolutely nothing to go Gino though. Oh my gosh. So one thing that's very interesting to note about Gogito is that they kind of have two different brains in their one brain now because they have all of Vegeta's thoughts and then all of Goku's thoughts. So they kind of have to mesh together and figure out exactly like what moves to do and how to operate in the same mind. Let's see if they can do it. So far, so good. But they've already gone Super Saiyan in their fuse form. I wonder if they can go Super Saiyan blue in their fuse form. Oh yeah, oh my! Oh my, oh, they are destroying Brawly now, but I'm pretty sure Brawly still has another form, doesn't he? Doesn't he get green hair eventually? I think that he does. Oh, wait. Oh, they just shattered, they just shattered space-time. They're, oh, they must be in like an alternate dimension right now because of how much power they are emitting. This is what I think is inside of a black hole. They did it again. This is what I would presume to be inside of a black hole. Bro, where are they now? This is like Inception. They keep going to different dimensions. Oh, they are Super Saiyan Blue now in their fuse form. There's no way Brawly can take them. There is no way. Whoa. What is that? Oh, I've never seen that move before. That was insane. Oh, the Dragon Balls are being summoned. The Dragon Balls are being summoned. Yo. Oh. Brawly. Oh my god, I just remembered. Are you serious? The Dragon Balls are being summoned. And do you guys remember who had the Dragon Balls in the beginning? Frieza had the Dragon Balls in the beginning and it seems like they're being summoned now. What on earth is Frieza going to wish for? Dude, this is actually insane. I think that this entire battle is going to reside on what Frieza is going to wish for. What if Frieza wishes to be, like, all-powerful and comes in and destroys both of them instantly? Oh my gosh, bro. But here we go. Kamehameha! In Super Saiyan Blue, fuse form! You can't stop that, Brawly! Wait. Oh, the Dragon Balls. He gets teleported away! I think Frieza just saved his life! What did he- Wait, what just happened? Who made that wish? Was it Frieza? Gohan versus Cell stick battle. Let's check it out. This is another Fabiano Cruz animation. Make sure to check out his channel. Link in the description. He makes some of the most amazing stick battles in the entire world. And this one in particular is one of my favorite battles in all of Dragon Ball history. This is the Cell Saga. And here we go. We already have Goku in his Super Saiyan form against the midi cells. Honestly, guys, it has been so long since I've watched this saga, I low-key kind of forget exactly how this goes. That is, is that Trunks? And there's Vegeta. Okay, they are all in Super Saiyan as well. These little rats, low-key, are so strong for, like, no reason. And they must destroy Krillin, right? If they're doing that to Vegeta. Krillin, why are you even there? Just walk away. Just leave, bro. You you don't help anybody. You just get in the way. With that big bald head of yours. And there was Gohan. Gohan, low-key, goes crazy in this battle. It is insane. And there's... <laughs> Mr. Satan holding on to Android 16. And he just chucks his head. I don't remember that at all, to be honest. But here we go. This is the epic showdown. Gohan versus Cell. Hold on, I gotta show you guys something. One minute later. Am I 25 years old? Yes, I am. Do I buy action figures? Yes, I do. Look! I bought this for guess how much? $300? Yes! That is exactly how much I bought it for. Did I buy two of them? Yes! Because the first one was broken and he didn't have a leg. The second one is this one and it's also broken! Well, at least that goes to show that I am a dedicated Dragon Ball fan. I, I guess. I don't know. Oh boy. But I wasn't lying when I told you this was one of the, my favorite sagas of all time. One of my favorite scenes. One of my favorite battles. Is this one right here? Gohan! Kid Gohan, really. Versus Cell. If you guys didn't know as well, Gohan was supposed to 
take over the entire franchise and become the new Goku. Until a lot of the fans didn't like that. And then Chi Chi, Gohan's mom, stunk and turned him into a nerd. And then Gohan never really got that strong. And. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, now you're taking a little too long, Gohan. Come on now. Really? I was gonna skadoosh. Oh. <laughs> He's too fast. No soup for you, my friend. Bink. And you just exploded into a bajillion million pieces. See, when anime characters get this strong, it is like the coolest thing ever. Oh my god. Wait, he's low-key in Ultra Instinct form right now, but he's not. This is Ultra Instinct Gohan. Look at him go! Yo! That is insane! This animation is so sick. So Gohan just went and took on all the minions by himself, who, by the way, were destroying Vegeta, Piccolo, Goku, and Gohan said, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep. And now he's on to sell. The mash mind behind them all. I, like, no one was even close to beating Cell, bro. Yo! Oh my! They are too fast to even see what the heck is going on. Bro, this is crazy! Oh. Let's go, Gohan. You gotta hit him with the Kamehameha! It's actually funny. In... There, I used to play the, the PlayStation 2 game, and go, and... Masenko. Oh no, he does the Masenko, that's right. Wait, does he not do the Kamehameha to you? Uh, I don't know. I feel like a fake fan. I, I really gotta rewatch this stuff. I don't just- I just don't watch that much TV right now. And when I do watch TV, I'm watching Naruto. I gotta watch Naruto first, and then I'll go back to Dragon Ball. I don't know if this is gonna have the entire saga, like... Is Cell going to blow himself up in this? Or Yo, that's Piccolo's move! That is one thing about this guy that is so annoying. Cell is so annoying because he steals other people's moves. That is going to be my new answer. Would anyone, whenever anyone ever asked me what superpower I would have, would be to steal anyone else's superpower. But no one else has superpower. So if I had that superpower, it wouldn't really do anything because I wouldn't get to steal anyone else's superpower because no one else has superpower. It's a lot to think about. I probably won't sleep tonight thinking about it. Anyway, onwards to victory! See, those are destructive. Those are Krillin's destructive discs. Gohan just caught it? You don't. No, 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 no. You guys don't understand. You don't catch a destructive disc. You don't do that. You can't catch a destructive disc. You guys saw the first one. It went through an entire mountain. You don't. You can't catch a destructive disc. The whole point of a destructo disc is to destructo anything it touches. Oh, and Gohan just caught it. That is like one of the coolest. That's maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen. And he tosses it away like a frisbee. Oh my gosh. Look at them now. They can't even touch each other. They're both too fast. This is just insane, though. Oh. Oh, he's the Kamehameha. I told you, bro. He's, he's literally such a stupid copycat. He probably cheated so much in school. I told you he does the Kamehameha too. He just also has the Maseko. Bingo, old man! Big forehead, noob! Look at that forehead. Oh my god, he looks like Jack. So I, is this where he decides to blow himself up like a big fat loser? Oh no, he can just regrow his limbs. That's not even fair. Oh yeah, get your elf ears back, nerd. Why does he even have wings? He doesn't even flap them. He doesn't even flap him to fly. Okay, now he's so slow. I think even I can beat him up. Okay. Bingo. Right in the nuts. That's what I would do. Kick him in the balls. No one is immune to a good nut shot. And it made him throw up. See? I told you, bro. Oh! Wait, he just threw up Android 17. And so he goes back to Imperfect Cell. Because if you guys remember, every time that Cell consumed any of the androids, that's kind of when he would level up and get to the next level. Exactly. And because he just threw up one of the androids, he went down a level, and now he's not in his perfect form anymore. 
And here we go. See, now he's turned into Adam Cell. This is what I like to call Adam version of Cell, where he gets really fat and he, he blows up the entire planet. Or so he claims he's going to. But Goku, being the amazing Chad that he is, decides to take this kamikaze body and teleport him to another planet. In doing so, Goku... Goku, uh, takes the, the ultimate sacrifice and blows himself up, along with King Kai, Jeffrey, and Bubbles. King Kai was not very happy about that. <laughs> He was not very happy about getting blown up. Because King Kai also died, and from this point onward, King Kai always had a halo above his head. Now, I don't actually remember... Oh. I don't remember that. That is one thing I don't remember. But what I also don't remember is I don't remember how Cell came back to Earth. What, how did that happen? I don't remember how that happened. But he just killed Trunks, who was Vegeta's son. And so that made Vegeta very angry. But even angry Vegeta still can't do anything against Perfect Cell. This literally just goes to show how strong Super Saiyan Kid Goku really was. Or Gohan, sorry. It's so crazy how strong Kid Gohan was, yet he kind of grew up to be a noob. So sad. Oh boy. And Gohan dives in the way of the blast to save Vegeta's life, but that does a lot of damage to Gohan. And here comes a big Kamehameha. And this is the iconic scene. This is, I'm not kidding, the coolest scene in all of Dragon Ball ever. In Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, any Dragon Ball movie. This is the scene. The father-son Kamehameha. Let's go. Gohan literally only has one arm at this point. And he's going up against a full power Kamehameha Cell who blasts him. So Gohan shoots one back of his own. Yo, I'm getting the chills watching this, bro. Oh my gosh. Unfortunately, though, Gohan is too weak at this point. And Cell has more poop to push out. Then go on. I mean, he's really pushing. He's really pushing. And then Goku from heaven sends his own strength, his own chakra force through Gohan, and together they overpower the dummy himself, the big forehead, bug looking dude, and blast him. Two bits! And he perishes forever! <laughs> Who's the stronger tight? Eren's attack tight or Rhyna's armored tight? Today, we're gonna find out. I love stick animations. They're always so awesome because you can do so much with them. This one is done by the amazing and extremely talented. Fabiano Cruz. Oh, and this is the scene. If you guys remember, this right here is the scene where Rhyna tells Eren that he is the armored titan and Bertold is the colossal titan. Eren is totally stunned. Even Bertold wasn't ready for Rhyna to tell him in that moment. But here we go. He shows Eren that he has extreme healing powers. Mikasa comes in, slashes him, slashes both of them. But unfortunately, it is not enough to prevent the two from transforming into their titan state. Here they go! I actually don't know what happened with Bertolt's colossal titan in this scene because it kind of only spawns like his upper body as you will potentially see. I don't know, I haven't seen this video yet, but that is what happens in the actual anime. Yo, this is so sick! I told you boys, stick animations are not as cool as the anime, but definitely very, very cool. Y'all, look, bro. That is the armored titan. That is the first titan that broke through the wall. Oh, no. Was it the colossal? I think the colossal broke through the first wall, and then the armored titan broke through the second. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. But is that Eren? I think Eren is hanging on for dear life right now. But eventually, you're going to see Eren transform into the attack titan. And they're going to go at it. So right now, 
Reiner doesn't even want to fight. Neither does Bertolt. They just want to take Eren and run away with him. They want to capture him for his attack titan powers and bring it back to his hometown. But obviously, Eren doesn't want to be kidnapped. And he is going to fight for his life. So, Reinet is jumping off the other side of the wall right now. I mean, as you can tell, it's a very big wall. If you guys have not seen Attack on Titan, or at least haven't finished it, bro, you are doing yourself a disservice. I'm telling you, I've watched a lot of anime. I've watched a lot of TV shows. I've watched a lot of movies. Attack on Titan is S tier. It is some of the greatest cinema you will ever watch. It's a bit weird to get into, but after you get into it, bro, oh my gosh, you get hooked. You get hooked, and it is insane. Please watch it. Here we go. Aaron is transforming into his titan boom bash uppercut bonk there it is and now they're gonna fall to the ground here and it is about to go down i'm pretty sure in the scene as well aaron uses some of annie's techniques yo Yo, unfortunately, so the one thing with the armor titan is his entire body is armor. It's not skin, it's like armor. Like you can't, even the scouts when they slash at the armor titan with their swords, it breaks their swords. That's how strong it is. So, unfortunately, it is insanely difficult even for another titan like Eren to do any damage against Rhyna. So, you'll probably see eventually that Aaron has to result to a little bit of a different approach, a little bit of a different tactic in order to break the shields of Rhyna. Here he goes. Here he goes. Bang! I think he's still realizing like the punches are not doing all that much. Like look, see Rhyna just walking forward. Rhyna just walking through all of his punches. But here we go. They now got to the ground, and this... Oh, no. Okay, hold on. Something happens when they're on the ground. So next time they're on the ground, keep that in mind. But Aaron is low-key getting destroyed right now. But here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look, they're on the ground. And as you can see, Aaron is going for some sort of chokehold on Rhyna. And as he was there doing the chokehold, he could see that the armor was actually cracking on Rhyna's back and like his neck area. So he was like, okay, hold on, hold on. We are on to something right now. We are on to something. So that Bayer Badapi is, is, is game plan moving forward. Oh God. Oh, jeez, I don't remember that. Oh boy. Oh, dip, swerve, back on top. And now he goes for a arm bar. That's what it's called. You grab the arm and then you like hump it at the elbow. Bing. I don't remember ripping the arm off, but apparently he does. So that is his new strategy is instead of actually fighting Ryan a hand to hand combat because he knows his punches aren't really doing anything. He decides, you know what? We're going to take this to the ground and wrestle and jujitsu. And that is where I'm going to dominate you on the ground. Especially because Ryan only has one arm. So now it should be relatively easy. I mean, have you ever, have you guys ever wrestled someone with one arm before? I haven't, but I'd imagine it'd be pretty easy. Whoa, that is just a regular Titan. That is not even like a, a person Titan. And there we go. Oh, I remember that too, bro. So I didn't even know this at the time, but Reinick can actually shed his armor off. So he shed the armor off of the back of his legs because that will allow him to be faster, quicker, more mobile, more agile. And he thinks that that would help him in this battle. Little does he know. Aaron's got some backup. But there we go. I mean, it works at first. He's so fast now. But Aaron gets him down to the ground again. And he is going at the neck. Mikasa comes in, slashes the back of the legs because they don't have armor on him anymore. And Aaron is cranking, he's cranking, he's cranking. He breaks the armor on his back. And he is about to finish the job. But Rhino crawls into a ditch. Now, what does this ditch do? Well, the ditch doesn't do anything. But then he calls up to Beartalt. The Colossal Titan, who is still all the way up there and falls over face first into a tsunami dive bomb. Now, if you guys thought that was epic, you have no idea what is to come. You actually might have an idea based on this scene right here. One of the greatest scenes 
in all of television history. No joke. I actually, I'm not kidding. I tell everybody I'm going to name my first child Levi because of this scene. This is Levi versus the Beast Titan. This is the scene right here. If you haven't watched it in the actual anime, you have to watch it, bro. You have to watch it. I'm telling you, you are missing out. But here we go. Here's Ervin giving the signal that the mission is a go. Everyone proceed with the mission. Even though they all know that there's going to be a lot of casualties. That right there is the Beast Titan. It kind of looks like King Kong a lot. Oh, it's about to get ugly. Oh, jeez. Ervin goes down. Everyone is going down, bro. But the mission continues. You don't stop for anything. You don't stop for anyone. I'm, I'm literally getting the chills right now watching this. I I have goosebumps. I literally have goosebumps. And there's the goat. There's the goat, Levi. One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. He's not stopping. He is not stopping. All of these people right here are giving up their lives, essentially, for a decoy for Levi. Because the Beast Titan is entirely distracted by the army of scouts that are headed their way. And so it is all on Levi to take out all the Titans and the Beast Titan. It's so sad, man. It's literally so sad. And there's Ervin. And the Beast Titan, I think, looks over and it's like, oh my gosh, wait, what? The Titans are dead. That's right, baby! Say hello to my little friend! His name is Levi Ackerman, and don't you forget it! Bink! There go the eyes. Going for the legs. Yep. He is too good. I mean, come on. I mean, that is the coolest scene of any show, of any movie, of anything that I've ever seen in my entire life. And Fabiano Cruz did an insane job recreating it in stick style. And if you guys want to see me react to some more of Fabiano Cruz's videos, you know what to do. Make sure to leave a like on this one and click right here to watch another amazing video.